Well, folks, I did say I would do a another Elite Mode case, and I will. This is what I'm going to do. Day of the Dead. These are great times for the Bureau, Matthew. We're all grieving the death of Michelle, a team member and friend we come to love and trust. She was killed in Sombra's birthplace at the hands of the man we thought to be Sombra's leader. But it turns out, although Castillo was Sombra's founder, he since handed the title of El Rey to a successor. Which means the real El Rey is still at large. The only information we have, Matthew, is that we've already met the current El Rey somewhere throughout our investigations. That could be anyone. Our immediate concern must be Castillo's threats about Sombra preparing to step out into the light in the north. The USA's sudden decision to build a wall along the Mexican border sounds exactly like the kind of political unrest Sombra could take advantage of. Which is why we've come to Mexico. Matthew, I want you to head down to the wall's construction site. The sooner we get some answers, the better. Yep, you're going to notice that I have the collie enabled because I felt like I'm a little short on money because I didn't really let my... I didn't really get the daily awards yet. Here we are. My God, Matthew. It looks like this poor woman has been hung up and beaten to death. Whoever killed her even put streamers on her. Was this victim decorated like a human pinata? This is gruesome. That name tag says this woman's called Cindy Hamilton and that she's the project coordinator here at the wall. Ah, I see you've ar you're already on the case, Matthew. That tablet must have belonged to the victim. The lock screen has her photo on it. I'll leave the password decoding to you. And I almost missed those broken pieces in all of this construction mess. I'll grab the clue so you can put that back together. It's a good thing that wall's not going anywhere, Matthew, because it will have to wait. We've got a murder to solve. And I need to get some more stars. But I'm going to start the autopsy here. Get the results tomorrow night. Hold on, everybody. Well, I know I only have three stars, but... I'm going to go ahead and take care of this anyway. Whoa, that skull mask is a bit creepy. What's it doing at a construction site? Wait, I think that's a Day of the Dead mask. That's how the Mexicans honor those who have passed away. I heard it's going on right now. You're right, Matthew. There's a message on the inside. The message reads, Cindy, please be my honored guest. And it's signed by a certain Lupita Mendez. It looks like this Lupita Mendez was extending the victim an invitation to something. Let's go ask her what it was. Sure it's Bienvenido, Marshal. I hope you enjoyed the parade. 
Wow, that's some intense makeup. Are you Lupita Mendez? We wanted to ask you about this mask you gave Cindy Hamilton. Yes, I invited Cindy to the parade. She's the project coordinator at the border wall. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> she isn't very popular, so I decided to extend her an olive branch. Well, she won't have to worry about that anymore. She's been murdered. Murdered? That's horrible. It's one thing not to like someone, it's something else to kill them. You say Miss Hamilton wasn't popular. Can you think of anyone who would want to hurt her? Nobody really liked her or this American wall, but she was just doing her job. I can't imagine anyone going so far as to murder her. All right, Miss Mendez, if you do think of anything, don't hesitate to let Marshall Matthew know. In the meantime, Matthew, since we know the victim was here, let's take a look around this parade site. Level 400. Okay. And now, I've moved up a ranking to Senior Trooper. It'll take me a little bit to get used to. And I'm also going to share some coins. There we are. Glasses I don't see at all. There we are. Not my best one, but you know what? I'm learning the ropes again. Lupita told us our victim came to the parade, Matthew. Did you find any new leads that might help us solve her murder? It looks like there's blood on that handkerchief, but there are also some black stains mixed with the blood. We'd better take a sample. And you can learn a lot about a person from their wallet, Matthew. Let's have a look through this one and see who it belongs to. Okay, now I have got to get some stars. I'm only down to one. So sit tight, everyone. All right, I got myself up to 13 stars. I'll examine the lock tablet first of all. Seventeen. That's strange, Matthew. The victim's tablet is open to the blog of some adventurer guy. Some adventurer guy, Artie Fax. Surely that's not his real name. In any case, the victim was interested in reading about his exploits. Let's run his photo through the database and see if we can find out who this Artie Fax is.
Here we are, 17. Marvin Hamilton. So Artifact is actually called Marvin Hamilton, and the database says he's the victim's brother. Marvin specializes in the preservation of rare artifacts, and his latest blog entry says he's currently trekking here in Mexico. I hate this part, Matthew, but we should go inform Marvin of his sister's death. Um, excuse me, are you Marvin Hamilton? Or perhaps you should call you Artie? Wow, I'm impressed. No one's ever discovered my secret identity before. Do you want an autograph? Um, well, we actually wanted to talk to you about your sister. We're sorry to tell you this, but she's been murdered. Oh my god, someone killed Cindy? This can't be happening. I spoke to her just yesterday. Do you know of anyone who might have threatened your sister? Not at all. Sure, she was blunt at times and rubbed people the wrong way, but she always spoiled me as her little brother. Cindy was a good person at heart. I can't believe Cindy's dead. Please excuse me, I had to call my parents. We're sorry for your loss, Mr. Hamilton. Stay close in case you need to speak to you again. Sample that brown substance from that handkerchief, Matthew? Let's see what Lars can make of it. Six hours. And let's get the wallet out of the way. Ramon Cortez. Matthew, the ID card you found in that wallet belongs to Ramon Cortez. That's Ingrid's ex-husband. He's also the one who tipped us off about the wall in the first place, and his ID shows he's actually working on that construction site. Let's go have a chat with Ramon, Matthew. Maybe he can help us make sense of this whole mess. About the trouble in Mexico? Ramon Cortez, this is Senior Trooper Matthew from the Bureau, and we're here to... Senior Trooper Matthew, gracias a Dios. Things have gotten worse since I first reached out to you. I'm so glad you're here. First it was that wall, and now my project supervisor's been killed. Cindy was your supervisor? Yes, I'm a supply manager on the wall project. Such a terrible tragedy. To take the life of a beautiful, strong woman... It's an act of pure evil. Um, so the Bureau's here. Is Ingrid with you? Yes, but it's pretty clear she doesn't want to see you. I'm not surprised, to be honest. The man I was back when, back when we were married, I'm not proud of it. What happened between you and Ingrid, exactly? It's a long story, but I became a drunkard. I, I slept around. Ingrid could only take so much before she asked for a divorce. But I wish I could show her those dark days are behind me. I'm a changed man. Well, that's up to Ingrid. Changed man or not, stick around. We may have more questions for you. Yep, that's right. You can call me Senior Trooper now because I was able to up my ranking to 400. I'll see you guys when these two are done. All right, folks, we have come back. Let's get the results of chapter two. Uh, let's go to chapter two right now. These are dark days, Matthew. We're still recovering from the shock of Michelle's murder. Sombra's preparing his final plan, and while you caught Castillo in Colombia, their current leader is still at large. But that's not all. We came here because the USA's decision to build a wall on the Mexican border is causing an uproar. A controversy that was confirmed when we found the project coordinator had been murdered. Matthew, I know where you might find more clues. I scanned the murder scene for security cameras and got a signal from underground. 
There's a storage facility right underneath your crime scene. An underground storehouse sounds like the perfect place for a killer to hide evidence. Matthew, put on your boots. We're going under. Just ask your doctor about Taltz. I thought everybody'd like some flugel, Kaka. Well, Mrs. Nyland, would you mind answering a few questions? As long as it's not math. <laughs> Here, why don't you sit right there? Very nice. Oh, if you need to know anything else about me, um, I have pictures. So do we. Now, our records show that you come from a town called St. Olaf. Torn you want to tell me about it? Mrs. Dylan, are you all right? It's just that nobody's ever asked before. Well, uh, I don't get it. They don't seem to have anything in common. I guess it's just like that old saying, you know, opposites attract. Well, that's very true. Back in St. Olaf, Ollie Knudt and Springle and his wife Bridget were okay. opposites in every way. I mean, he was fat, she was thin, he was neat, she was sloppy, he was tall, she was short. He was cheap, she was extravagant. Okay. He was opposites, we get the picture. Well, judging from the blood on this club, it's obvious the killer was down here. Let's send this club to Lars so we can confirm the blood is our victims. And this must be the security camera Elliot detected. The view screen's locked, but I'm sure that won't be a problem for you, Matthew. This torn poster is probably worth looking at, too. If the killer's been down here, it might be theirs. Did you bring the tape, Matthew? I hate you. Scandinavian midnight snack. I guess after a night of pillaging and raping, a Viking wants a little something to go with his car. Alright. Well, the snap got off. Yeah, just when you were about ready to throw up from the stage, that's when we're done. AL4 570. YXG 16. Go ahead and press play on that view screen, Matthew. Let's see what this camera recorded before it stopped working. Mr. Cortez, I don't normally do this kind of thing. You mustn't tell anyone about this minor indiscretion. Now, Sio, Silito, you don't partake of the passion that is Ramon, then call me Mr. Cortez. Be serious. If anyone knew I'd come down here with you... Mi amor, Ramon doesn't talk about his sexual conquests. Like all true legends, it's others who will talk about it. Ramon, please, if anyone finds out and I lose my job because of you, I'll have your head. Ooh, such passion, such power. Cut me, Munyitsa. Let us rock the universe again. Mr. Ramon, oh. I'm just jotting oh, down gosh. some things that I want to say to the president. Oh, Dorothy, you're not going to make a scene, are you? Okay, come on. Okay, you can stop that recording, Matthew. We get the picture. Ramon was clearly lying when he said his womanizing days were over. He was having an affair with his supervisor. Perhaps he's not a changed man after all. You're right, Matthew. This legend needs to explain himself. About the affair with the victim. All right, Ramon, stop lying to us and come clean. We know you were sleeping with Cindy Hamilton. Um, you found out about that? I was sure that camera was turned off. But I won't deny it, Senior Trooper Matthew. That beautiful Cialetto and I shared a day of magic and passion. We rode on my motorcycle, then we made a, then we made wild, passionate love. And do you always sleep with your supervisors? Amigos, there's nothing sex sexier than a woman of authority. You can't bridle a stallion like me. 
We're not your amigos. Cindy said she'd have your head if anyone found out. Perhaps it was you who had her head. How dare you? I never lay a hand on a woman. Apart from giving her pleasure, of course, my days of violence are over. Well, you, well, if you did kill Cindy, your days of freedom will be over for good. Torn poster, no. in this house I'm not gonna waste an opportunity like that I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. this is a protest poster Matthew whoever this belongs to is clearly not in favor of the walls construction we know the victim's involvement with the wall meant she had a lot of enemies let's recover that beta text and see if it brought if it belongs to one of them Americans 83% trying to eat healthy get up to 90% fall short in getting key nutrients from food alone Let's do more. And one a day women's. Complete with key nutrients we may need. Plus it supports bone health with calcium and vitamin D. One a day women's and gummies and tablets. Being a mom of these five girls is a lot of work. But it's organized. The energy system to it. Ten energy. Because they do live off average amount. Those are strong words, Matthew. The poster says, bring down the wall. Bring down Cindy Hamilton. The protest seems to be endorsed by Medina Cuervo. I think we need to have a few strong words of our own with Medina Cuervo and find out whether she actually did bring down Cindy Hamilton. Got her protest against the victim? Medina Cuervo? We're here about your protest. We don't know if you're aware, but Cindy Hamilton's been murdered. Of course I'm aware, and I hope you're not implying that I had anything to do with it. I'm a peaceful protester. Those posters of yours don't look very peaceful. Look, Cindy Hamilton and her wall stood against everything I believe in. As such, she was my enemy. That wall is dividing our nation, undoing decades of effort on both sides of the border to achieve peace. But I respected her conviction in standing behind her cause, even if I didn't agree with it. I'll raise a glass of tequila to that. And maybe she was right. Once this wall's built, people like her won't be in Mexico anymore. If she'd stayed away, perhaps she'd still be alive. And that's going to do. I'll let the club run its course. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. All right, folks. We have returned. Let's get the results of the bloody club. Great news, Matthew. I can confirm that the club you brought me is the murder weapon. Or at least I confirmed it before DuPont snatched it away. What do you mean DuPont took it? Ah, let me explain, mon ami. This is an exquisite example of a traditional piñata bat, intricately inlaid with Aztec carvings. Piñatas have been part of Mexican culture for centuries. The ancient Aztecs worshipped their war god, Huitzilopochtli, by decorating a clay pot and hanging it on the stick outside of their temples. Huitzilopochtli. Okay. Filled with jewels, these pots are then smashed open during public festivals. The treasures inside are presented as offerings. To be in possession of such an object, the killer must certainly have a knowledge of ancient Aztec beliefs. I don't think human offerings are what Hootzilli, Hotzapaco. Oh, forget it. But now that you've discovered Cindy's killer has an affinity for Aztec legends, they'd best believe it's only a matter of time before they're behind bars. Do you think we can go and call St. Olaf now and you can explain it to them the way I explained it to you? Great work finding the murder weapon, Matthew, but this case is far from closed. We need to dig out more evidence if we're to catch Cindy's killer. Good idea. The killer has an affinity for Mexican cultural traditions. Let's go back to the Day of the Dead parade. They may have spent some time there. You made a deal that's going to profit both sides. You've come a long way, Sporny. 
Thanks, babe. Well, I better be gone. It was a good evening. Spawn at and spawn at. What a team. <laughs> Maybe we can do it again sometime. Maybe. Thanks, babe. I don't know whose blood is on that hammer, but I don't like it. Let's get a sample, Matthew. And I feel bad rummaging through these memorial offerings. But I agree, Matthew, we should probably take a look. Alright. Never mind my TV. My regular news. That photograph he found doesn't seem to belong among those altar objects. Wait, Matthew, that's the victim, and she's being yelled at by that parade organizer, Lupita Mendez. Lupita invited Cindy to the parade to extend an olive branch, but she sure doesn't look happy. We better ask her why. when you lose a loved one. Today, that pain was mixed with shock after the tragedy that happened here at King in Pensacola. According to police, a 20-year-old Honolulu woman was riding with two Gee. female relatives when she three. apparently opened the door of the van and fell out. It's how you fall out. It's kind of a strange uh -huh. dynamic when the car is moving. Can you explain this photograph to Senior Trooper Matthew, Miss Mendez? I thought you invited Cindy Hamilton to the parade as a peace offering. I did, but she made a mockery of one of our most sacred traditions. Look at the photo. She sat down on a memorial altar, drank the offering water, then lit a cigarette using one of the memorial candles. Afterward, I rode my Italica to the wall site to bury the hatchet and offered to share around our tequila, but Cindy laughed in my face. You're admitting you went to the construction site and argued with the victim? You realize that's where she was murdered? Wait, you think I have something to do with that? Don't be ridiculous. If we find out that you organized the day of Cindy's death, Lupita, you'll be spending next year's celebrations in jail. Now the incident caused a major traffic, traffic backup during rush hour that happened on South King Street between Victoria and Pensacola. Those streets were shut down for more than an hour and a half. From the newsroom, I'm Jordan Segundo. Back to you in the studio. All right, thanks, Jordan. Well, heavy rains and flooding for many locations tonight. Hey, Rogers, Pete Cajano is tracking the wet stuff. Hey, it just keeps on coming. 17. Let's get this bloody clutch off that hammer to the lab. Lars can tell us who it belongs to. Heavy rains for hands of it, and one that's just been really... Just kind of keeps on going and going is the one on the windward side all the way to the north shore. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. That's where we're seeing about 6 to 10 inches of rainfall since sunset. So that's a huge amount of rain. Another 24 hours. I'll see you guys when this is done. All right, folks, we have returned. Let's get the results of the blood. Well, Matthew, the blood on that hammer wasn't the victim's, but it's still connected to your investigation. The blood matches certain Chico Alegria, 
who is a senior contractor on the construction site, which means he worked with your victim. If Chico Allegri knew the victim, he might be able to shed some more light on this case. Let's go talk to him and find out. It's my best buttery jack yet. The triple bacon buttery jack with hickory smoked bacon, bacon mayo, and my super secret ingredient, bacon butter. It's amazing. Let's email Ask about the victim? Email? Don't worry, we're not gonna get hacked. Chico Allegria? We wanted to ask you about the murder of Cindy Hamilton. Yes, such a tragedy. I drank a bottle of my finest tequila to honor her memory. We were surprised to hear that. Most of the people we've spoken to didn't really like her. Cindy personally endorsed my application to manage the construction companies at the site, so you won't hear a bad word about her from me. She wasn't very popular and neither is this wall, but none of that interests me. I'm making a lot of money from this project. Don't start spending your fortune yet, Mr. Allegria. We may need to speak to you again before this investigation is over. Beaten to death with a pinata bat, Matthew. What a way to go. And the list of the victim's enemies seems to be getting longer. Lupita Mendez was outraged by Cindy's disrespect at the Day of the Dead parade. And that protest leader, Medina Cuervo, had plenty of motives to take the victim down. And Ramon lied to us about his relationship with the victim, so it's hard to believe anything he says. Everyone admits to being at the crime scene. To be honest, any one of them could be the killer. Matthew, there's trouble at the wall. A crowd of people is gathering on the site. They're threatening to tear it down. Uh-oh. We'll have to get to Chapter 3 and stop them after this. Alright folks, you've come back. Let's start Chapter 3 of Day of the Dead. The list of Cindy's enemies is getting longer, Matthew, and any one of them could be her killer. Matthew, there's trouble at the wall. A crowd of people is gathering on the site. They're threatening to tear it down. Ugh. That's all we need. A bunch of protesters compromising the crime scene. Let's go, Matthew. We know Hawaii's complicated laws and will help you get treatment and payment from your insurance company. Mexico doesn't want anything to do this wall. This is America's idea, not ours. If they won't stop, we'll take it down with our bare hands. Everybody quiet. No one's taking anything down. This is a construction site and a crime scene. This isn't the last you've heard from us. We won't take this lying down. Everyone be on your way. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer caught up with lawmakers so They're all gone. I don't know about you, Matthew, but this is all but all this wall seems to be doing is causing problems. But right, now we must stay focused on catching Cindy's killer. And we can't do that with people compromising the crime scene. Speaking of which, let's look around the building site to make sure no evidence was lost. know the new case is going to be open in a little bit, but, uh... Countries who are supposed to be your friends, and probably they are your friends, but oh. I'm assuming that within a, a, a system or a foreign country that maybe has friendships with the enemies. For Curdy, she just wants to see the fighting come to an end. Unfortunately, I wasted 3,000 coins that way. And to find the political solution. While the bill is waiting for a vote in the House, a Senate version is expected to be announced Thursday by Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer.
clearly that's the victim's briefcase, Matthew. It has her initials on it. Go ahead and unlock it. And that looks like a ripped up photograph, but I can't make out anything. You'll have to ta tape it back together. A building site is an, un site's an unusual place for a statue like that. And look at that message scratched into it. I know you stole this. <clears throat> There's some liquid on that statue. Let's get a sample. We're so close to cracking this case, Matthew, I can feel it. Some lawmakers feel community was not kept informed. A Senate bill would allow media access to report the news during emergencies. There should be some access at, at some point in time, and so, and the people need to know in, in our state what's happening. Well, first off, uh, you know, we have visitors, I'm going uh, to change well. to the Mountain Goat so uh, I can gain some more money. Wants to know what's happening. Well, the measure would this one, of course, some more coins. It also limit the state and county's liability in case any reporter is injured during emergency coverage. Now, this is the third time Senator Lorraine Inouye announced, introduced this measure at the legislature. She's hoping that third time is a change. The booming industry of black market 16. continues to blow up. I'm curious about that clear liquid you collected from that statue, Matthew. Putting it under the microscope should give us some answers. My local news. No worries. Only they're not supposed to. Pretty much everything you see here is illegal. So many fireworks, so few busts. Over the years have been a few and very a few individuals being arrested and convicted, so individuals are willing to take that risk. One man took that risk, but his alleged operation flamed out. Police and federal agents say they found nearly Three. 900 aerial fireworks in Brandon Ka'ai's possession. That's nearly $38,000 in street value. People are making money off of it, and thus, that's why it's so lucrative. At a public hearing Wednesday, community members voiced frustration about the fireworks. Marvin Hamilton. The fact that their calls to police don't... That clear liquid you collected off that statue is sweat, Matthew, and it matches the victim's brother, Marvin Hamilton. I wonder who was accusing the Aztec adventurer of stealing. You better track Marvin down and find out. Setting off illegal fireworks to make an arrest. A new bill introduced by Representative Sharon Har would allow photos or videos to be used as evidence. Yeah, the purpose of this bill is to enable the community reporting of illegal aerials in their community. And the measure in the House would allow um, eyewitnesses. Marvin, I think you need to explain this message. To, to Were you stealing well. artifacts? The bill aims to give HPD another tool. Um, in which to do technically, you'd call fireworks. it smuggling, but the it's all in the interest of historical preservation. Okay. Or it would have been if my sister hadn't ruined a priceless piece by scratching those lies across it. The state says a new case of a bee disease has been found in Kula. So Cindy found out you were smuggling artifacts through a construction site? That wouldn't have gone down well. Look, I'm merely redistributing these rare objects from those who don't appreciate them and putting them in the hands of those who do. Aztec culture is my life. Nobody's better suited to preserving it than I am. With all this construction, sneaking things across isn't difficult. I put them on the seat of my motorcycle sidecar, hiding them under a box of tequila. Except your sister found out. I'm guessing she put a stop to your little operation. And now that she's dead, there's nothing stopping you. How dare you even suggest it? You think I'd kill my own sister to keep this quiet? We've seen many murders for less. If Senior Trooper Matthew finds out you did kill your sister, your next adventure will be in jail. Four already. Work will include sandblasting of rusted surface areas and replacement of 17,000 pounds of steel. Ship will also be completed, completely repainted with protective coatings. Repairs will be done in the evening so the historic ship can remain open to the public during the day. The project is scheduled for completion in September. United Airlines announcing new daily service between Denver and Kona starting June 8th. The Kona Kohala Chamber of Commerce happily welcoming SGR. visitors each week. UBE. Oh, I didn't even have to move my mouse after all. United offered this route. 
Oh well. Was there anything inside the victim's briefcase that'll help us find her killer, Matthew? That document you found in the briefcase is in Spanish, and so is that message scribbled across it. Let's have DuPont look at this document. He'll tell us what it says. Bring it back to Maui County officials can help the traffic when Honolulu Pilani Highway is closed. That's the main roadway. Eighteen hours of Maui's west side. I mean, I think the, the benefit here is there's a lot of times we have road closures due to fire, car accidents, um, landslides. So the, the, the plus to that is to take some of the traffic off the highway and be able to have emergency responders get in and out when we need by having this facility here. This is a photograph of that protest leader, Medina Cuervo, and I'm guessing that young girl is her daughter. It seems Medina doesn't hate America so much after all. Look at that t-shirt, I love USA. Good eye, Matthew, that motorcycle in the background means Medina rides motorbikes. It looks like Medina Cuervo still has a few things to explain to us. Let's go. About her photograph. Miss Cuervo, this is a sweet photograph. Why tear it up? I didn't. It was that evil dragon, Cindy Hamilton. I showed her this picture to let her see the human impact this wall was having. I love America and I've always been proud to be their southern neighbor. But Cindy tore it up and said mongrels like us should be kept on our side of the border. Um. I can see how that would have upset you. I love going on motorbike trips to America with my daughter, but once this wall is built, I won't be able to anymore. This is a declaration of war against ordinary people like me. A fight is the last thing I want, but sometimes it's necessary for peace. The Aztecs had a saying, the earth is not a place of contentment, it is merely a place of joy with fatigue, of joy with pain. I hope you didn't let Cindy's insult get the better of you, or your world is about to have a lot more this pain and a lot less joy. Okay, I'll let the document run its course. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. Okay, folks, you come back. Let's get the results of the document. I must say, Matthew, after that magnifique pinata bat I examined earlier, this document is a letdown. We're sorry to disappoint you, Dupont, but did you find out if the victim's document is connected to her murder? The document itself is a memorandum from the victim. Apparently, she was accepting applications for new contractors and letting go of the old ones. The message scribbled across the page says, I'll see you buried under the wall before you can get rid of me. Someone clearly wasn't happy with Miss Hamilton's plans. Good thinking, Matthew. If there's anyone who'd be angry about replacement contractors, it's Chico Alegria. Perhaps Chico's fortune wasn't as guaranteed as he thought. We'd better go talk to him. About threatening the victim. Chico Alegria. It sounds like your gravy train working on the wall was coming to an end, and you threatened the victim about it. Ah, I knew I never should have sent that message. But I was furious. Cindy ran the construction sites like a stubborn mule. She was always telling us men what to do and never listened to anything I said. And then she sent out that memo calling for new contractors. American ones. She said if anyone was going to profit from building this wall, it should be her country. Is that why you killed her then? Because she was cutting you out? What? No. I sent her that threat in a fit of rage. I should have gone for a ride on my motorcycle to calm down. I'm a direct descendant from a powerful Aztec warrior. I deserve more respect. This is what happens when a woman runs things. When I started out, women knew their place, and it wasn't on a building site. I'm not sure our bureau chief would agree with you. And if it turns out you made good on your threat and killed Cindy, your place will be behind bars. Our victim had a lot of enemies, Matthew. A fiery protester, an angry contractor, even her own brother. Working out who actually wanted her dead is proving to be a challenge. 
and none of this is get, getting us any closer to finding out the truth about this wall. Good idea, Matthew. We know the killer hid the murder weapon in that underground storehouse. Maybe there's something else we missed. Let's go. The sooner we solve this case, the better. I'm gonna go with the cat this time. All right. Pinata bag. All right. Did you manage to pick up any new clues, Matthew? The evidence you need to crack this case could be here. That bag of pinata streamers. They're exactly like the ones on the victim's body, which means the killer must have handled this. You're right. There's some white powder on the outside of that bag. Let's get a sample of that. I'm less convinced about that toolbox, but at this stage, any lead is worth a shot. Let's look through it. There we go. No financials at all, Father If that bag of pinata streamers was the killer's Matthew, it could break the case wide open. Let's get this white powder you collected to the lab. Father Eugene? I may have something. Father Eugene is paying six hundred a month for a Bronx walk up, but he's also renting a loft in Fort Greene for thirty five hundred. Thirty five hundred. His salary is twenty five hundred a month. That doesn't add up. That's at least part of this rent. Thirty hours. I might speed that up, but we'll see. Cloth. Your instincts are always spot on, Matthew, but I'm still confused. How is the cloth you found in this toolbox going to get us closer to our killer? Yes, I see that stain on those stra strange sparkly pieces. I guess we better send this cloth to Lars to get some answers. Eighteen hours. See you guys when these two are done. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. All right, folks, we have come back in Day of the Dead in Elite Mode. Let's get the results of the white powder from Lars. Look what Lars got me, Matthew, a pinata. Uh, that's great, Sanjay. Just don't be smashing that open in here or Carmen will have a fit. Sorry, Matthew, all of this talk about pinatas got Sanjay a little over-enthusiastic, so I got him one of his own. Speaking of which, that white powder you collected from that bag of streamers contains a mixture of minerals, including granite, limestone, and sand, all the major components of concrete. Given that there was crushed concrete on the outside of that bag, the killer must have had concrete dust all over their hands, and it's likely they wiped some on their clothes. We'll have the killer between a rock and a hard place, Matthew, if they got concrete dust marks on their clothing. Everything's been pretty chaotic since we got to Mexico, bro. So if you've discovered anything useful from that cloth Matthew found in that toolbox, I'd love to wrap this case up sooner rather than later. Sure thing, bro. That cloth is a great find, Matthew. That stain on the corner is tequila, and it matches the sample Grace found during her autopsy. So this definitely belongs to Cindy's killer. The cloth is made of microfiber, the kind you use to polish jewelry. 
More specifically, those small sparkly fragments you noticed, they're from a colorful gemstone which I've determined is opal. So you're saying the killer used this claw to polish their opal jewelry? Well, I guess that colorful stone proves one black and white fact, Matthew. Cindy's killer is wearing opals. Not a moment too soon, Matthew. You put all the pieces of this puzzle together. Let's go arrest Cindy Hamilton's killer. Nope, it's not Lupita Mendez. Don't think it's Marvin Hamilton. Not Ramon Cortez. It's definitely not Chico Alegria. All that leaves is Medina Cuervo. Medina Cuervo, you're under arrest for the murder of Cindy Hamilton. Me? Murder Miss Hamilton? That's absurd. I told you I'm a peaceful protester. I wouldn't call stringing someone up and beating them to death with, a, with an Aztec pinata bat peaceful. It must have taken a lot of rage. I'm hearing a lot of speculation, Senior Trooper Matthew, but no proof that I did anything. You can cut the act. We found your tequila soaked into the rope you used to tie up the victim. Tequila? One of the most popular drinks in Mexico? That's hardly evidence. We also found it on the cloth you used to clean your opal earrings. I... Senior Trooper Matthew, if you start arresting everyone who's wearing opals, you'll be pretty busy. What I don't get is you murdered her so brutally, and for what? Because you couldn't go on vacations with your daughter anymore? What? No! I killed Cindy because I'd never be able to see my daughter at all. My daughter was born in America. She lives there with her father. We've been divorced a long time and I rarely get to see my darling Rose. But once this wall is completed, I'll never see her again. All border crossings will be prohibited for Mexicans and it won't be safe for her to travel here. I tried to convince Cindy to do something, anything, but she laughed at us, calling my daughter a half-breed. And that's when you snapped and killed her. When I realized what I had done, I decided to make an example of her, to draw attention to my cause. So I strung her up like a piñata to show the world that Mexico wouldn't allow itself to be brutalized at the hands of America. Taking the law into your own hands is never the answer. Medina Cuervo, you're under arrest for the murder of Cindy Hamilton. Medina Cuervo, you stand before this court charged with the murder of Cindy Hamilton. What is your plea? Guilty, Your Honor. I killed that woman. I don't deny it. She and her wall would have destroyed thousands of families just like mine. Cindy Hamilton wasn't personally responsible for that wall, nor will her murder stop it from being built. The world needs to know Mexico won't stand for this wall. We won't take this lying down. Many of us have been working towards peace between the U.S. and Mexico for decades. This wall will destroy all of that. It never ceases to amaze me. Violent killers who talk of peace. But Dina Cuervo, you're hereby sentenced to 30 years in prison for the murder of Cindy Hamilton. This isn't over. The wall, that wall is the beginning of the end. Peace as we know it is lost forever. Congratulations on bringing Cindy Hamilton's killer to justice, Matthew. I know this was a chaotic case. But I must admit, I'm still unsettled by the warning from Somber's founder that they're on the verge of making their final move. After the rise and fall of the Prometheans, Somber's infiltration of Cosmorus, their child brainwashing program, and global network of assassins, what else could they possibly have planned? One dress to think of it, Matthew, and despite all of our efforts, El Rey is still out there leading them. We must redouble our efforts, Matthew, and find out what Sombra is planning. Take a look at the other ones. No opals on Chico Alegria. 
Lupita Mendez cleared early after cleared clue three. Marvin Hamilton, no concrete smudge. Ramon Cortez cleared from the start. It was Medina Cuervo. I'll see you guys for Edge of Darkness 1-8. Okay, folks, we have come back. Let's start Edge of Darkness 1-8 in Elite Mode. You caught Cindy Hamilton's killer, Matthew, but our work here in Mexico is far from over. If Cindy's murder has told us anything, it's that the wall the Americans are building along the border is causing a lot of controversy. Instability like this is particularly worrying, given the threat by Somers' founder about their plans to step into the light. If El Rey isn't behind this unrest, it could, have, it could certainly play right into their hands for whatever Somers got planned. For now, we need to gather more information about what's going on here, and that means going back to the construction site to see what you can find, Matthew. Leave no stone unturned. Before we decide our next move, we need answers. I know you got your hands full, Matthew, but I'm worried about Ingrid. Ever since her ex-husband contacted us, she hasn't been herself. Ramon admitted he cheated on her before they divorced, but Ingrid's behavior suggests there is more to it than that. I'm with Marina on this one. Ingrid's been out of sorts, and we must find out what's upsetting her. We've got our work cut out for us, Matthew. Start by talking to Ingrid if you like. I'll meet you at the wall. Let's start with Ingrid first. Ingrid, Matthew and the rest of the team are worried about you. Ever since Ramon... You can stop worrying. I'm fine. We just need to leave and forget all about this. I know it's not easy, but you're clearly running from something, and forgetting isn't the answer. If just hearing Ramon's name made you burst into tears, there's something else you're afraid of. You don't understand, Matthew. We were so in love and had everything we wanted, and then... Oh boy. Being here reminds me of all the joy we had, but also of all the pain that came after. It's too much sorrow to deal with again. I'm sorry. Ingrid, wait. That didn't go as well as I hoped, Matthew. I know Ingrid will feel better if she talked, but she doesn't seem ready. As a friend, I'd rather not pry into Ingrid's private affairs, but as the Bureau's therapist, I need to know whether she's emotionally compromised. Good idea, Matthew. Ingrid says she and Ramon shared happy times here. Maybe we could find something at the Day of the Dead parade that will remind her of those times and encourage her to talk. But I think we could both use a drink first. I'm buying. That little box holds a pacifier inside, possibly to remember a baby. These altars are for people to honor the memories of loved ones who passed away. You're right. There's a message inside the box. It says, Your daddy Ramon loves you. Ramon? Could Ramon have lost a child? You're right, Matthew. We shouldn't jump to conclusions. It's a grim suggestion, but getting a sample of saliva from this pacifier would help us determine whether this child's father is our Ramon.
It's heartbreaking to think about, Matthew. A child's death. But we must put our emotions aside if we're to uncover the truth about this wooden box. Let's get that saliva you cl collected off that pacifier to the lab and see what Lars can tell us. Putting four on that one because I was working on the current case, but before that'll even be posted, this'll all be finished. Dumpster. Bell. Oh boy. There we are. Personally, I don't really care about my score anymore. Basically, I think I'm happy with the fifth. We're searching for anything that might tell us what's behind the unrest in Mexico, and it comes down to this digging through a dumpster. I agree, it's a good place to start, but I'm not going into that bin to search for evidence. I'll leave that to you, Matthew. Did you find anything useful in the dumpster, Matthew? I'd hate to think you went crawling around in there for nothing. That article you found in the trash has got the headline, Mexico Demands Unified Nations Sanction USA. Could this have something to do with the wall? I've fallen behind on global politics, but I'm sure Elliot can dig up more information for us. Eighteen hours. See you guys when these two are done. Alright folks, we have come back. Let's get the results of the saliva. I've gotta go, girls. I love you more than anything in the whole world. Say hello to Matthew. Hi Matthew, we love you daddy. We miss you. Sorry Matthew, I just needed to talk to the triplets. This lab sample you sent me was a difficult one. The DNA profile you got from that pacifier confirms the deceased child's parents were Ramon Cortez and our very own Ingrid Bjorn. So this child was also Ingrid's. How terrible for her and Ramon. No wonder Ingrid's suppressing all those memories. Matthew, Ingrid will probably be upset about us stirring up the past, but we should talk to her about this. About her son. Matthew, it's pointless to keep coming to see me. There's nothing more to discuss. Ingrid, we found out about your baby. We're so sorry. How, how did you know about Eduardo? Oh, my darling Eduardo. Ramon and I were so deeply in love before we had a child. But after Eduardo was born, we grew closer still and became a family. We had no idea you were carrying such a terrible burden all these years. Do you want to tell us about your little boy? Eduardo was born premature. The doctors warned us it would be a struggle. He fought so hard but didn't make it. Ramon and I were shattered, naturally. Neither of us knew how to deal with it. We stopped talking. We stopped living. He started to drink and sleep around while I completely shut down and cut myself off from everything. 
Still, it feels so good to say Eduardo's name. I haven't said it out loud in years. Obviously, Ramon's been feeling the same way. He placed your baby's pacifier in an altar to honor his memory. I'm shocked he even thinks about Eduardo anymore. I didn't think he cared. Perhaps it's time you finally talk to Ramon about this and find out about how much and find out how much he really does care. Senior Trooper Matthew, it's nice to... Hello, Ramon. Ingrid? Is that you? Yes, it's me, Ramon. It's time we finally talked. Matthew, show me the box you left at the altar. I didn't think you cared about Eduardo anymore. How could you think that? I do it every year to honor the memory of our dear boy. I always hoped one day we might do it together. After losing Eduardo, we both became strangers. I wish things had been different, but it's too late for us now. Our journey together has ended, Ramon, but maybe we can still honor the past instead of letting it destroy our future. Eduardo was a gift to us, if only for a short time. We should be grateful for what we had. Thank you, Matthew, for helping us talk together and confront our past. We're both grateful. Please take this gift as a token of our appreciation. And I'm going to speed up the article right now for six. We've been so busy lately, Matthew. It's been a while since I've had a chance to read anything in the news. This article is a small piece in a complex political puzzle. To start with, the article references the United Nations, which as you well know, Matthew, is a global organization promoting international cooperation between its member states. These include Mexico and the U.S. It appears the USA's decision to build a wall along the Mexican border was made without external provocation and without a clear cause. As a result, Mexico has demanded the United Nations impose sanctions on the USA, meaning economic trade agreements with other member states would be restricted. We know Mexico's response to the wall has been negative. Cindy Hamilton to learn, the, learn that the hard way, but we must know more. I looked up the men in this photograph and one of them is Nilo Vertanen, a special envoy for the United Nations. He's in Mexico now negotiating with local authorities. Alright Matthew, if there's anyone who can tell us more about what's going on, it's this Nilo Vertanen. Let's make an appointment to see him. Um, hello. Are you also here to protest against the wall? No, we're not protesters, Mr. Vertanen, but we understand you're here representing the United Nations. We wanted to ask you about this article. Ah, yes, the call for sanctions. A strong reaction, I must say, but I guess I'd be pretty upset, too, if someone started building a wall on my doorstep, so to speak. Can you explain what led to the construction of the wall in the first place? The wall is only a physical manifestation of a deeper underlying problem. Lately, the U.S. has leaned towards isolationism, cutting themselves off from the international community. This, of course, goes against the principles of cooperation and mutual aid championed by the United Nations. So the question of sanctions was raised by Mexico. This unfortunately led to the emergence of the U.S. name movement in the U.S., which I'm sure you all know about. Um, actually, the Bureau's been quite busy lately. What's U.S. name? It's rather complicated. The easiest thing would be for you to look over my files. They're right... Dear God, my portable hard drive is gone. I must have lost it when I visited the Wall's storage facility. All my files are on it. That we can help with. Senior Trooper Matthew's good at finding things. Let's head down to the storage facility, Matthew. But how about a little pick-me-up first? I'm starving.
try it out. Hard drive. Oh. Oh well. But it wouldn't have mattered anyway. That must be the hard drive Nilo was talking about, Matthew. It has a Unified Nations symbol on it. Nilo authorized us to read his files, so go ahead and unlock the hard drive. Unlocked, Matthew. Let's have Elliot look over Nilo's files and see what he can find out. Three. Now I gotta make sure. Oh, 18 hours again. All right. Get the results tomorrow night. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. Okay, folks, you have come back. Sorry about this. And let's get the results of the hard drive. Do you know how many clauses there are in the Unified Nations Charter, Matthew? Um, no. Consider yourself lucky. There are a lot of them, and I'm sure I've read every one. But it paid off. Hunting through Mr. Vertanen's files. His records go into great detail about the U.S. name movement, information you won't find in the press, and it's not pretty. The U.S. name movement arose as a protest against the possible sanctions on the U.S. They're calling for the government to take the U.S. out of the Unified Nations. And this isn't a small group of radical fundamentalists, Matthew. There are millions of activists lobbying for the government to listen to their cause. The nation is polarized on the issue. This all sounds so this all sounds so crazy, Matthew. What else have we mixed in our race against Sombra? The good news is, it's not all doom and gloom. Have a look at this video. I know the naysayers would have you believe a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and that America should break free from that chain. The U.S. Navy movement thinks we need to close our borders, shut the gates, and eliminate the outsiders. But now, more than ever, it is the time for us to stay the course, stay united and stay strong together. Our future must be a unified one. I'm Sandy Turner, and I say we stay. That was Sandy Turner. He's the leader of the U.S. Stay Movement, the group who wants the U.S. to stay in the Unified Nations. Nilo Vertanen wasn't kidding. The U.S. is really divided on this debate. This is a lot to digest, Matthew. We'll have to brief Chief Ripley on all of this. Thanks so much, Matthew, for helping me get Ingrid to open up. I know now she'll be able to cherish her past memories. I intend to. Thank you again, Matthew, for giving me the strength to face my fears. What the... Ingrid, is that really you? I realize that by shutting out the pain, I've also been shutting out all of the joy of life. But no, but no more. It's time for me to start living again.
Wow, it's nice to see you so happy, Ingrid. Unfortunately, we've also got some bad news. We've just had a crash course in current American politics, and it's tumultuous to say the least. There's a battle raging in the U.S. between those who want to withdraw from the Unified Nations and those who want to stay. I don't need you to tell. I don't need to tell you about the volatility of this situation, Matthew. Tensions in the U.N. are the last thing the world needs, especially now that Sombra is likely waiting to exploit any weakness. Sombra's founder said we'd hear about things in the news soon enough. What if this is what he was talking about, and it's playing right into El Rey's hands? We don't know for certain. What we do know is that U.S. Stay is holding a rally in San Francisco right now. If we're to find any answers, U.S. Stay is the best place to start. You've been away a while, Matthew, but it's time to go back to the United States. I am planning to do another case in elite mode, but not for a while. This reminds me of when we were kids, and you and Stan double dated with me and Louis. Oh yeah, we went to Roseland, and you and I did the jitterbug. And then afterwards to Louis for a malt. Yeah. Well, that's when Stan did his walrus imitation with the straws up his nose. I already got the burger. Yeah. Now Stan uses breadsticks. I had quite a crush on you. You did. I never did. Four. Four new ones. Three new ones. Two new ones. What does that mean to you? Four new ones. And the final one. Four new ones. All right. <clears throat> I told Dorothy about Al Capote. You heard me make the reservations? Yes, and I think it's a terrible mistake. You mean, it's true? Well, yes. All right. I don't know what to say. I hope you'll say yes. Ted, I think there's something you should know about Dorothy. She snores like a freight train. <laughs> Who cares? She's still a great gal. Hey. Okay. Hey. Case 38. Ooh. And that's going to do. I'll see you guys then.